men of broader intellect know that there is no sharp distinction betwixt the real and the unreal. They say that I am mad. They said the two locals found me in the morning, seven miles from the town of Windlaps. I was and muttering meaningless gibberish to myself. I was cursing and arguing with myself. A raving madman with burning eyes, lost in the dark depths of his own merciful delirium. They say that I have been searching for a particular grave in the local cemeteries. They were right. If you knew whose grave it was, you would understand. So my behavior, which seemed abnormal, had nothing to do with madness. You must understand that. If you knew what had happened to me, then you would, I promise, also understand the reasons for my behavior. It all started on that cold November day. That was when I was given the case of the fugitive suspect, Loth Nolder, a man whose intelligence I greatly admired. He had returned after five years of traveling to bizarre locations and had become the primary murder suspect in the first case he took on. It was Loth Nolder who left Wellsmouth those five years ago, but was he the same man who returned? That's the question. This I will leave to the judgment of the readers of these notes. They tell me that I've been here in the Wellsmouth Mental Institution for two weeks now. Is it really that long? I cannot say. I do not remember the first eight days. The doctors tell me I am making progress. I think they are lying. It takes me longer every day to remember where I am, even who I am, after I wake up from the dreams. That is why it is essential to keep these notes as I struggle to convince myself that I am really mad. Because before the night that I was found, I looked into the deepest wells of madness more than any man alive. Yes, I am definitely mad. I must be. Because everything I have seen, I have seen through the eyes of insanity's omnipresent soul. Another nightmare. What's going on with these dreams I've been having lately? So vivid. Almost as if they were real.
Yes, Arthur. At last. Where were you? I've been trying to contact you for hours. What's the problem, Arthur? Loth Nolder escaped from the hospital last night. I've been calling you for hours with the news. Strange. I never heard the phone. Check your answering machine. I left several messages. Anyway, what happened with Loth? No one knows. It's like he just vanished out of the place overnight. Okay. I'm on my way in now. Howard, are you feeling all right? <sighs> just a little tired, Arthur. I must have overslept last night. Nothing to worry about. Okay. I'll see you soon. Yes, Howard? Arthur, it's me again. Sorry, I think I might have missed a few things earlier. Okay, Howard. What do you want to know? You called me. So why didn't you leave a message on my machine? What do you mean? I left plenty of messages. You didn't get them? I don't know, Arthur. I think this old machine is broken. Never mind. We'll talk about it when I get to the office. See you.
Wellsmouth. Never much happening here. Just run-of-the-mill cases and paperwork to catch up on. That's my normal working day. But not with this case. I've got to admit, it's been good to be dealing with something a little out of the ordinary for once. These are investigation pictures taken at Lothnolder's office. There was nothing there when we first searched the place. I have examined the place several times since then, but couldn't find any clues. That office is the only property Nolder owns. He even sold his house to help pay for his strange travels around the world. So why didn't he sell his office as well? I think I'd better take these pictures with me. Maybe there's something here we're not seeing. There wasn't this much mess the last time I was here. It's been sealed for police investigation, but someone's been in here. Who was it? And why? There is nothing important here. It's almost empty. Mm -hmm. 